We are going to add a particle node and set the particle materials and set the draw path to a quad mesh. After that, we will adjust the particle material properties, focusing on the spread of the particles, initial velocity, acceleration and scale. For the scale, I have already tested and found the curve and the numbers that work well for my example. Moving on, now we will create a blood shader. It's important to ensure that the shader is a visual shader and we will name it blood. To achieve the desired effect, we will start by adding a 2D texture node and selecting the noise texture. Specifically, we will choose the parallel noise option and set the fractal type to none. This will give the particles a simpler appearance. Now we are going to connect the noise to a power node to give the texture more vibrant look. Next we will create the circle mask. We need to connect a UV node to a UV polar code node and turn off the repeat option, otherwise it may appear distorted. Then we will add a grayscale node. After that we have to invert the mask because the alpha channel reads white as visible and black as transparent. Following that we will connect our texture with the mask using a vector operator multiplier. Now we can quickly set the red color for it. After that we will set the alpha value of the shader and connect the invert mask to the alpha scissor threshold. And voila, we have our blood particles. We can fine tune the alpha value if desired. Another issue is that every particle looks the same, which is odd, but we can use a new trick. In the vertex section we will add a billboarding node and select keep scale on. This will ensure that the particle always face the camera. Next we need to add a instance node, which allows us to customize each particle uniquely. We will connect the ID node to the X value on a vector composer node and then connect the vector composer to the color output. This way we can send the ID to the fragment section. In the fragment section we will add a color node and connect it to the vector decomposer node. After that we will multiply the X value by 0.1 to convert it to the float value. Adding a UV function node to this will help us offset the noise texture. Lastly we will connect the UV node to it so that we can connect all of this to the texture. As you can see, every particle looks a little bit different. We can further enhance it by increasing the amount of particles to make it even cooler. The next step is to add a particle collision box to the scene. We can set the scale according to our needs. For example, like this. After that we are going to name the particle and we will activate the particle collision and set it to hide on contact. Then we will create a new particle node and we are going to set the particle material and set the draw path to quad mesh. We are going to turn off the gravity and set the quad mesh orientation to the Y axis. We also named the particle node blood spot for better readability. After that, in blood particles, we are going to select the submitter mode to add collision. Then we will assign the blood spot as a submitter. If this is working, we can tune the blood spot particles amount. The optimal amount which I discovered is the same amount we used for the blood particles, which is 100. Now let's duplicate the blood shader and name it blood spot. We will then set it as the material for the blood spot particle node. Then we are going to adjust the scale of the blood spot particle node. 
and make sure to turn off the blue boarding. To achieve a splash like effect, we will add a curve to the blast port scale and add an extra point on the curve and lower the value of the first point to enhance the splatter effect. As you can see, there isn't much splatter on the ground because we need to adjust the floor or the particle collision box. After making the necessary adjustments, the result looks much better. Now we are going to find the geometry instance property of the blood spot particle node and set the cast shadow option to off. Moving to the vertex section, we will add an instance custom node and connect it to a vector decomposer node. Then connect the y values together. This way we will pass the particle life spam to the fragment section. In the fragment section we will take the y value and connect it to a 1 minus node. We are going to connect the output of the 1 minus node to a float operator and set the operation to multiply with the desired value. And then we are going to connect it to the alpha output. And we are done. 